Okay, who's iPad three so I can make sure you get attendance. Tom, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I got you, Ray. I got you, Bill. I got you, Jim. I got you, Frankie. Oh, I got you, Scarnado. And I got you, Tom. I just don't know who iPad 3 is. iPad 3 has left the building. Got you, Ken. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. It's still tight. Well, he's got to win this one. Dave Roberts, I got you. Eric Smith, I got you. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Who we tell our selection for uh, the dinner? Got him. Sean Gilpin. Donnie, okay. Just send him an email. Is he on the meeting? No, he's not going to be on tonight. Okay, cool. Thanks. Frankie, I got you. Tony, I got you. Mark Jakes, I got you. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Hi, Tone. Got me right. Gotcha. Heck of a job you're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Hey, Mark. Got you, Jimmy. Got you, Jake. Sounds good. Thank you. Can you hear me, Mark? I got you, Tom. Okay. Hey, Mark, it's uh, Paul Sotex. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got gotcha. figured all the Sotex are there. I got Brian. I got you, Lou. Mark, Mark Jakes. Yep, gotcha.
I got you, Mick. But you've got the members from other chapters listed, but yep. Yep. Cool. Let's see. Eric Smith's joining us. That's a pleasure yep. and an honor. Mick um, Cronin. Chicago. Very nice. Hey guys, happy Sunday. What's going on, Mr. Cronin? How you doing? Not too shabby. How about yourself, Lou? Nothing that 35 more soccer referees couldn't handle for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy who's standing in my yard right now praying for no rain. I think you're going to be all right. I think I'm going to be screwed. <laughs> yeah. All right, who's John's iPhone? I can't see. Hey, Mr. Cronin, happy birthday. Thank you, Kevin Bombas. Happy 9-11. <laughs> see, I knew it was Nick's birthday. I was waiting for the meeting to start. We were going to see. Uh, I blew Sorry. it. Sorry, Kevin. No worries. Sorry. Hey, who, who, anybody know who John's iPhone is? I'm going to take Stainer. Yes, let's see. Uh, I think he's gone, whoever it is, anyway. Is that Bill D'Elia? Looks like it. Kenny, what district are you? Mark, it's me, Bill Deli. Okay, gotcha. All right. I'm trying to figure out this yep. new Zoom thing, how to talk and not to talk. So All I'm right. not going to talk anymore unless you call me, okay? Yeah, that'll, that'll never happen, but okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Kenny Stainer. See, see one of ours? Yep. Kenny, we're, we're thrilled to have you with us, pal. What district are you from? You're on mute, my friend. Sorry about that. I'm uh I'm from District Four, out of the Susquehanna okay. Valley chapter. Okay, good. Welcome. I just want to make sure I give you credit. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yep. I love to see how far these Zoom meetings reach. That's great. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Uh oh. Kick myself off for a minute. All right, Mark Kirsten, I have 7 p.m. Tony, Go Cavalero, you good? Yep. yep. All right. You want me to begin, Lou, or you got? Go uh, ahead. I think we're ready to rock. So, very good. After, good evening, folks. Welcome um, to our uh, Sunday evening. Meeting of the Susquehanna Lackawanna Interscholastic Athletic Association soccer officials. Very nice to have some uh, outreach as well from uh, other people throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So those not from District 2 that are joining us, uh, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our president, Tony Cavallero. Tony's going to give the, uh, some insights on his world. And uh, Tony also has a great presentation on safety prepared for us that we're gonna go over real quick. And then I'm gonna talk about uh, gamesmanship and game control and we'll wrap it up. Tony, you got it, pal. Okay, a couple things. First of all, uh, I wanna thank Lou. Lou and I worked hard working with the administrators to uh, come up with an agreement that I thought was fair. 
they are moving things forward to try to try a line. Uh, excuse me. They're trying to align. Is that me or? Uh, they're trying to. I don't know if that's my. They're trying to align the, the Lackawanna League with the Wyoming, Wyoming Valley Conference. That's the goal of Joe Gulhul and the Wyoming Valley Conference uh, and talking to Joe and Amory for the next three years so that we at least look together as far as contract and because we do do both leagues, some of us. Uh, so uh, that's one thing. Uh, so I, I was happy and I thought it was a good, good bargaining and we did the best we could. We had to give up some things, not, not exactly what we wanted and not exactly what they wanted, but it was great. Uh, second thing is I did establish a, a YouTube page, uh, Susquehanna uh, chapter referees association uh, that we could put some things on there. Right now I have arriving to the match. I filmed Ronnie and Mark and Tim Turgeon the other night, uh, what to talk in the pregame, what to talk to with the captains, and also how to start the game where you walk out the center and split. So, but naturally a lot of you guys have a lot of experience. So you do your own little uh, thing at the pregame. I'm not telling you, you have to do what you, what Ronnie is saying, uh, other than you must read the message of sportsmanship. We all know that, but everybody has that little shtick. Uh, Doc Mould used to do a great thing, very positive. I always, I wish I could have filmed him uh, too, because he's excellent with it, but take it uh, new guys that are just joining and just learning. Uh, they're going to stay on there so we don't have to repeat it every year. I do want to add videos uh, for, for signals. I know the USSF has an excellent video for si signals. Uh, maybe, Lou, we could look at that, but it's not quite. It ends with adding time, time adding, which we don't do, and it doesn't do the tripping and stuff like that. So I'm still wondering, uh, doing some stuff there, but I can only add film. So if you come up with something, I know I plan on filming positioning on corners, and putting that on there, hopefully to get some of you guys. I am volunteering my time because I'm injured. I had some neck surgery uh, about four weeks ago, so I'm not refereeing. So I'm volunteering my time to go out to watch a match and evaluate officials. It won't get sent into the PIAA. It'll just be my input. So you could take it for a grain of salt and learn from it. Uh, if you email me and tell me, especially if you're at Delaware Valley or Paw Pack or Homesdale, uh, they're close to me. Uh, if you say, Tony, hey, I'm going to be out there 4.15, I'll come and observe you and get you, get, you know, we'll communicate. It's worked well with a couple of times. So that's that. So uh, I think that's it. So uh, let me get to, uh, I, I talked to this before, now that we're out of COVID. And one thing that we saw with COVID is uh, a lack of, or, and, and thank God, uh, a lack of uh, school shootings and school violence. But now that we're all back in school, you start, oh, you have it, thanks, Lou. Uh, we're starting to see uh, more shootings in, in school. So when you arrive to the game and you meet in the parking lot at determined time with your, the head official calls, tells you I'm meeting the parking lot at 4.15 so you could go in together. We should be talking about, uh, you know, the game, but also about, campus emergencies and understanding camp as an administrator we know what code red is and code blue and uh you know people call it different things my brother is a state trooper and he always says we should make an announcement there's a shooter in the building or there's a shooter on the field so be prepared and survey the field where you're parking first of all and uh what what you, you plan on doing uh to exit the game before you even gave, give, I think that's Stephen Covey. I think we have him on here. Uh, always have a, the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind, Stephen Covey always said. So even as you're parking your car, uh, I mean, uh, certain schools, you have to go a certain way to get out, but you want to look to where you can leave the field without having any conf conflict with any, any parents. Uh, uh, you know, the closer you get to them, the more they think they could shout to you. Naturally, you don't want to shout back. Uh, but if you can exit the game with the security, if, I know at districts, they do send somebody in and out with us. So uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, once you get to the field, you might want to look at where 
if a shooter would show up, I, I believe it or not, I have a habit of doing this when I go to the movies now. It's just ingrained in me because I've been a part of it for so long. So look at where you could go if there was a weather emergency is one or a campus emergency uh, so that you could get somewhere with that emergency. So, uh, and, uh, uh, and I'll talk about that later. But the first thing is the field condition. You're looking at the field uh, before you begin play. The AD will determine whether the game is going to be played. But once the whistle blows now, it's your determination whether to play. What I've noticed is some ADs get under pressure to not cancel a game and they don't want it on them. So they want you to show up and cancel a game with a big puddle in front of the goal when obviously we should not be playing that game. But if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. You judge it by your own uh, judgment once that whistle blows, even though you may know as you uh, uh, walk around the field that, that this field is not playable. I don't know why they even called us here today, okay? So uh, uh, when thunder is heard, thunder, look, I mean, you, when I first started years ago, they used to say, oh, listen for the thunder. And if it's, if you hear one a half hour away, you got time. No way. Right now you hear thunder or see lightning, we stop the game. We stop the game. We wait 30 minutes unless we hear or see thunder, uh, hear thunder or see lightning again, then the clock starts again. I think we're all aware of that. But this is the safety is the most important thing we could do. Safety of players, fans, ourselves. So please don't ever, I don't care if there's two minutes left in the game. Uh, game stops when you hear uh, thunder or see lightning. And then we go, go on the clock accordingly. Medical emergencies, you can add, uh, you know, just to cover yourselves. And I know Mark set out the thing for insurance to cover yourselves. I took out the insurance. I think it's cheap. Uh, but you may want to document the emergency. Uh, if a kid breaks his leg because he, uh, uh, you know, I know when I was in high school, I slid into second base and uh, the old bases with the metal bases. I got 11 stitches in my, uh, in my uh, shin uh, sliding into that base. So if this happens in soccer, you slide into the corner and you hit the corner pole that's sticking out, you may want to document that so that, uh, you know, you inspected the field, the corner pole came up later or whatever, uh, it was fine when the game started and this player had to be attended to. Just document to cover yourself, uh, especially if it's a serious injury. Uh, a concussion, you'd sent the kid off maybe, and the coach had the trainer look at him and sent him back on. You may want to discuss that, uh, you know, at the Arbor and just say, hey, I sent a kid off because he was drowsy and they sent him on. He was cleared by the trainer. Uh, it's not our responsibility to, to, to determine whether he's ready to play. It's theirs. If they say they're trained, it used to be where we used to have to have the medical note. So, so then we go back to code red lockdown. Uh, if there's an emergency, code red lockdown, Go to the next slide, Lou. I think I have that one with the... The first thing you want to do is run. You do want to get in position where you're safe. Now, I would say as a high school principal, I think Mark would be the same. Uh, you would want to get as many kids with you and, and coaches and players with you and direct them to get to somewhere safe. They may be, even be directing you if you don't know the facility. Uh, this is what happened, I think, out in, out in Texas, which is disheartening. You know, nobody... You know, uh, they had no place to run. They were in there, you know. So, uh, but get get yourself safe, number one. Number two, you hide. You hide somewhere where you're safe until the police come. And when they come, they're supposed to go right in and not stop. Yes, they're trained to go right in and look past you and anybody laying down on the floor and going to the shooter. So that's their responsibility. I've never heard anything different than that. I've been in many safety tra trainings in Harrisburg, and this is what they're trained to do. Uh, and then the last thing you would do if, uh, you know, you're sitting in your room right now and somebody opens the door and comes in. If you're in a locker room changing, somebody with a gun comes in right there, then you have to fight. You have no choice. So this is what's trained in schools. Teachers are trained in this. Administrators are trained in this. And if you're not an educator, you may not see this, although I think most companies in, are, are doing this uh, more often 
uh, to, to prepare their employees in case this stuff happens. And it could happen anywhere. I always say, and we owe my brother Paul and I do a safety uh, little lesson or a four hour little session. And one of the biggest things is uh, communication. You know, uh, know what's going on. Uh, like right now, if you went to referee of Parkland, you'd be concerned, right? They've been shut down for a few days because of uh, people making bomb scares. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, this is something that you have knowing and having knowledge and hearing things. If you hear things from somebody, don't be afraid to report it to the administrator on the bill. Hey, I was just at Turkey Hill. Two kids said they were going to come down there, and beat the crap out of their friend. You know, uh, this might happen. You might say, hey, I'm going to the game. I might, I should share that. Share information keeps everybody safe. Okay, go ahead, Lou, to the next one. I think that's just about it, right? Okay, choose parking near other officials so that you can exit together and stay together until you leave the field. Uh, and then, as I said before, limits interaction with the general public. And at the end of the game, meet officials at the center and leave right away. We're not to see the shaking of the hands. Uh, you're spo not supposed to have even a bag there, although you can leave the bag that that official on that side could pick it up because I know I have a ball pump in my bag and a, and a gauge. Uh, but uh, so that, that, that's, that's key there. Uh, you know, I'll never forget Doc Mold and uh, Toby and I were doing a game over in Dunmore's field and you have to come out by that fence where everybody waits. And that's a tough place to come out. And sure enough, somebody says something and it's, you got to bite your tongue if, if, they're, if they're talking trash to you. Uh, there's always going to be half the people happy and half not happy. So uh, that's my little pitch this year. It's the same as last year on, on safety. And prayfully, uh, you know, hopefully we don't have to deal with any issues. All right. Thanks, Lou. Good stuff, Mr. President Cavallaro. Thank you. Any questions for Tony? Um, Tony's not lying to me. He says this is a, a thing that he and his brother do. Um, they do this as a four hour certification course for public schools, private schools, corporations. So uh, questions? So Tony, I, I have a question for yeah. you. Um, so I was at a game and I was on the, uh, I was on the side where the, um, you know, by the fans. Okay. And, and there were some comments going going back and forth, but then two parents were getting into it. Um, so, um, and I, I forget the comments, like, um, you know, uh, one one guy said, oh, he's a flopper, give him a card. And, he, and there was another guy on the other side saying, no, he's not a flopper. And, and then the guy responded, shut up and don't tell me to shut up. And I, I just told you to shut up. So is there any type of, of, of responsibility from a referee perspective no you know regarding it, that it's hard to listen to that crap you know yes, really but if you have the headsets on you can headset your teammate on the other side your your co-worker and say listen could you tell somebody at the scoreboard or at the clock there might be an adult there or the coach and say there's something going on in the stands i mean uh unfortunately with soccer you know, we don't have a lot of administrative support, although it's gotten better uh, at certain cases. I know games that I've been to, DV, uh, Chris Ross is always there. But if he's up in the stands, he might not hear that. I understand what you're saying. But yeah. we don't get involved with the fans. I mean, I wear hearing aids. The nice thing is when I don't have them in, I really can't hear other than the headsets. Right. Uh, and I'll, I'll say sometimes to Mark, is that, is that parent yelling at me, Mark, or is it you? Because I really can't hear. And that's a good thing because we really don't want to get involved with that. It's as hard as, it is, you know, if the guy says, I'm going to get a gun and shoot you, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Then maybe you want to call time and have the kids go to the bench, you know, and, and say, if you think it's that violent, but you don't, you don't confront that situation. You take care of the safety of the kids, yourself and the coaches. So, uh, I mean, if you hear something like that, you could call time out. Uh, I've seen a ref call timeout when things got really crazy and out of control and just had mostly in the youth level, they go to the benches and you say, hold on, talk to the coaches. Let's just take a breath here. Well, maybe they go to the benches. It could be a scenario where you say, Hey, listen, this guy's up in the stand saying he's going to go get a gun, I, I, you know, uh, better to, to decide on safety, but don't get involved with it. Other than I think the best thing might tell, tell the other ref, don't you think Lou, 
and that official could could report it to the bench uh, to the scores table. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes into what Tony said before about being a team, both you know before, during, and after the game. And I'll give you my quick story. Two years ago, October, uh, myself and two other gentlemen on our call tonight are officiating a District Two single A girls championship match. Very good game. I believe it was a one goal differential. Um, very few, I don't think we had any cards in the game, but somebody lost, somebody won, of course, as they always do. And as the officials were gathering at their vehicles, because we parked next to each other, uh, we heard the parents screaming at us, yelling at us, cursing at us, you name it, uh, the entire time. Um, one person individual was quite vocal. Um, so we actually noted who that person was, their car. And it turns out that when the officials decided to leave the venue that night, this guy decided to follow us most of the way home. Uh, and stuff like that happens. It's unfortunate. Um, but stick together as a group and report it. And we did. And of course, that person was dealt with by the school properly. Uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, but stuff like that has to go reported. Because, you know, if we say, ah, it's not a big deal, it'll never happen to me, or ah, this guy was just a jerk, or this person was just an idiot, then he probably won't do it again. You never know. The way things escalate nowadays in the world that we live in, you don't know. So report it. Let's deal with it, stick together as a group, and by all means, make sure somebody's aware of what's happening with these games uh, when you're out there, because safety is, the, safety is the most important factor for an official, for the kids on the field, but our safety is just as important. So, please. Yeah. Tony, thank you. Anything no, else? The, for... the last thing, Lou, is the, uh, the, the little situation or scenarios. I appreciate some of you guys responding back, and uh, if you see a different scenario, send it to me. I think it like the ball kicked out of the goalie's hands, right? Is this legal? Like, it's not legal, but but you, you say, well, why are they asking this? Like, do they think this is legal? Like, it, it, this happens sometimes when you're repping and you haven't seen something in 10 years, and then, you you know, uh, it's good to put it out to people. So I know a lot of you guys have been around a long time. If you come up with a scenario that's kind of new or kind of different, send it to me. I'll send it out to everybody. And then we could uh, learn from each other is really what we're doing. And the library that I'm putting together with these videos are going to stay. We, we won't, once we have the pregame on video, that's going to be it. Uh, so we could keep adding things as you think are important. Uh, like this is being taped tonight. Mark is taping this. Hopefully I could drop this into that YouTube and believe it or not, I'm doing it myself. I'm a tech person now. So, uh, but my wife is doing all the graphics but I'm doing the, uh, the YouTube. So, uh, so it's just to help one another learn and, and get, you know, make us the best we could be. By the way, Tony's disclosure. wonderful. Lou, just for full disclosure, number one, every time somebody yells, it is at Tony, not at me. And number two, there's no chance in hell that Tony's doing this by himself. His wife is doing it. I'm doing it. I was more. just going to say, there's no way because uh, Tony's no wife way. does all of our preseason surveys. Exactly. Tony's wife does those wonderful Google surveys that we all get. So yeah, I'm not, she does that, but I'm not going to, I have been doing it, Mark, and we're on a recorded line. So I'm not going to say what I really want to say. Okay. All right, guys, go ahead. They'll take it all. It's a brotherhood. We got to love it. Cool. Well, good stuff for Tony uh, to talk about control because uh, I'm talking about control tonight for, uh, for us. So here's our educational piece of the evening is guidelines for game control and how we control a match. So some important things that we're going to talk about. Terminology. Uh, it's important that we're using the right terminology when we're doing game reports or when we're addressing coaches or administrators or our fellow officials. You know, before the match, during the match, after the match, and then some advice to referees on what it is. So some terminology we should know about, and we should use these terms as we do our game reports in Arbiter, or when you call me or you call an athletic director and say what happened. When you have to abandon a match, match abandonment. This is generally if the field or its equipment or something does not meet the requirements of the law or in, we're in high school. So the rule uh, of what it is, for instance, um, uh, the field is unsafe. That doesn't meet a requirement. So we're going to, we're going to abandon the match. We're not going to play that. Uh, the field is not safe to play on. We can't do it. Tony mentioned that in his little, in his presentation that many times uh, the athletic directors will put it on us to do it. So if we feel it's not safe, we're going to abandon the match. We're not going to play that. The difference is 
between abandonment and suspension is a suspension is a game is temporarily interrupted for some reason. Could be participants, could be spectator interference, could be weather, could be power outages, could be whatever. Suspensions happen often. We have that lightning that happens and we have to wait 30 minutes. That's a suspension. Not an abandonment or not a termination, but that's a suspension of play. We're going to pick up at some point. It might not be today, but when you want to report what happened in a game, you'll say the game was suspended with 13 minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the second half. Boom, 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 whatever the case may be. So make sure we understand what suspension is. And then termination is a big one. Termination is the game is stopped for actions by the players, by coaches, by spectators, reasons of safety, whether it be bad weather, um, darkness, uh, unsafe conditions. You could have a terminated game because of what Tony said in his speech was somebody threatened somebody. Uh, that game's over. We're terminating the game. So it's important that we understand the difference between the three of them and how we report that stuff. So some tips for us as referees on how to control games and make sure it doesn't get out of control. Before the match, identify who the bench personnel are. Who are the coaches? Who are the trainers? Who are the substitutes? Is the athletic director there? Uh, who's, who's on the sidelines today? If they need to be there, they should be on the roster. If they're not on the roster, they probably don't need to be there. So don't let them gather. They don't need to be there. We're fortunate that we play in a lot of fields that have fences now and, and football fields or multi-purpose fields. Get them in the seats. We don't need to have lounge chairs sitting on the sidelines anymore. Get them up, get them out because it's only gonna help you control the game better. Identify the players and the substitutes they need to be on the roster. If they're not on the roster, they don't exist. Coaches, administrators, trainers, scorekeepers, water boys, ball people, these are all good things to put on the roster because there are people that are supposed to be at the field level where you are. Grandma and grandpa don't need to be on the roster because they're not going to be participating today. So let's put them up in the seats, please. All others are pretty much outside of our control. So if they're not a player, they're not a coach, they're not a substitute, they're not a bench personnel, they're not an administrator, then that doesn't fall on our watch. Those are spectators or observers. So those are people that we really don't have a lot of control over, but we're going to have to deal with their actions. So we're going to keep going to talk about that more. Before the match, if you have a problem, delay the start until it's resolved. Most of the time, this may be equipment. This might be the field. The goals aren't properly anchored. The nets have huge holes in them. Uh, there's a large puddle of water someplace that you feel is unsafe, but we can correct it. So let's sweep the field off. Let's get some diamond dust. Let's put some effort into it. But we'll, we'll delay the start of the match if we have to. But if we can't get that to do it, if we can't uh, fix the problem, if it's unsafe, then we're either going to abandon or terminate the match, depending on which is appropriate. Make sure if you're going to do something like this, you got to let us know. Write a report, what took place, what you did, the reasons for your actions, and why you did it. This is the CYA. I'll cover your, I guess we'll say back. We're on recorded lines now. Uh, this is this is this is the cover yourself method. Uh, I felt the field was unsafe for this reason, because when somebody has to tell a high school principal why they have to reschedule a game or an administrator why they have to reschedule a game, let's make sure we have it. Okay. During the match, if we have a weather problem or equipment problems, stop play. Inform the teams that you're suspending the match until the problem can be resolved. Maybe the goal blew over. Maybe the, the nets have now blown off the net for some reason. Maybe we've got standing water on the field. Uh, we're going to fix the broken goal, that broken half for some reason. Whatever the case may be, we're going to stop the match, suspend the match. If it's a weather-related issue, of course, we have to wait the appropriate time frame. Inform both teams what's going to go on. Inform both teams when we're going to resume and how we're going to resume. And then start properly. In our case, most of the time we're going to have a drop ball, especially if the ball was in play. You know, if you stop it on a corner kick or a goal kick or a throw in or after a goal, then of course we'll, uh, we'll start appropriately, but by all means, make sure we're noting that information, particularly if we suspend the match and we have to resume it another day, we need to have as many details as we possibly can. So we can pass that information along in case you're not involved in the rescheduled date of that match. If you got problems with the bench, Stop play 
or wait for a stoppage of play. You want to you want to be as the official, the level-headed, calm one in this situation. You got a coach screaming at us. There's only two people in this conversation: you, as the official, and the coach. Guess one. Guess which one is probably going to be more calm. I hope it's us. Let's not let our emotions and our anxiety or our temperament get into us when we're talking to the coaches. So stop play if you have to, or wait for a stoppage of play that's appropriate. Walk over nice and slow and calmly approach the coach. Speak with authority, but in a polite manner. And simply coach, stay in the technical area. Coach, stay off the field. Coach, control your bench. Coach, enough of you today. Coach, we're not going to allow that today. Coach, we need you to keep quiet today. Proper professionalism, addressing with coaches at all times. We are not going to go over and belittle people. We're not going to go over and get right back in the coach's face because he's in our face. We will be the calm and level-headed person in that two-person equation. And then you're either going to restart with a drop ball or an appropriate restart for the stoppage, whatever the case may be on how you stop that match. But most importantly, deal with the coaching issue. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay? So stop play if you have to. You can show a card to players and coaches. Tell them what you're carding them for. Make sure they understand the meaning. Coach, I'm issuing you a caution for dissent. Coach, you're getting a yellow card for dissent. Coach, your continued comments are unacceptable. I'm going to report them to the PIAA. Coach, you're dismissed from the field. Here's your red card. But absolutely be certain that the coach of both teams and the official scorer understand what you are doing. Again, we're the calm ones in this equation, okay? We're the calm person. This is a rule of thumb that I have. You can follow it if you want, but I don't want, if that person is not within 100 yards of the field within two minutes, I'm leaving. I'm not waiting 10 minutes for this person to leave. I'm going to let the administrator know, and sometimes it's the head coach that has to deal with this, but this person is going to be out of here at least 100 yards from me in the next two minutes, or I'm leaving. We're going to terminate this match, and I'm going to report why. Of course, you can restart with a drop ball or whatever the appropriate restart is. Here's the things that get us in trouble sometimes is the spectators. Our job is to control the 22 players in the field. Our three officials work together to do that. The substitutes on the bench and the coaches in the coaches' boxes. Everybody else in the seats are spectators. Uh, you know, I teach my team for my full-time job is control what you can control or control the controllables. We can control the people in the field and on the benches. We can't control the spectators in the seats. That's out of our purview and it's really out of our realm, but we still have to deal with it. So sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot identify who the person is that's causing the problem. So I'm gonna to speak to this a little bit uh, on the sense that yes, we might have to deal with this, but for all means, I hope that we don't have rabbit ears the reality is you're at a contest, you're at a sporting event, and you're an official in a game. There's going to be a winner or a loser, most likely. So 50% of the people are probably not going to like us when we walk off the field that day. If only half the people hate us, we probably did a good job. If 100% of the people hate us, maybe we should reevaluate how we did the game. But somebody's not going to like something that day. That's fine. It's their given right to yell and scream sometimes. But there's a line that, is, that, that crosses as well. And you as a referee have to determine what that line is. For instance, my line is when somebody uses my first name to yell at me, whether that be a coach or a spectator. Uh, I don't allow that. And I'm, that's something that I'm going to deal with. But I'm going to suspend play. I'm going to negotiate cooperation with the coaches or school management personnel. So hopefully there's a game administrator, athletic director, principal, assistant principal, school resource officer, um, a coach from another team that's serving as the administrator that day, or it might be the head coach of the home team or the home site that you're going to have to deal with. But you can let the school know what's going to happen. We're either going to have this problem stopped and we'll continue play, or if the problem continues, we'll terminate the match and go home. And we'll let everybody know why 22 players are getting back on the bus because the school refused to deal with the problem that you addressed with the proper people. It's not our job to deal with spectators or fans or people outside the fences. Our job is to control the game. 
However, when those people on that side of the field or the fences or the spectators now start affecting the way that the game on the field is playing, that's on us to deal with it. And there's a proper way to do that. But we will never tell a spectator they have to leave. That will be the administrator or the head coach or whomever is in charge of the game management that day. And if they choose not to, your option is to terminate the match. And then by all means, report it properly. So here's my advice to us on how we should handle this. Stay calm. As I said before, be the calm one in this equation. Be the voice of reason. Understand that the coach has a job to do. He's only going to see it one way. His job is to win soccer games. He's going to want it his way. So don't expect a voice of reason from the coach. We need to be the voice of reason. Stay calm. Don't display anger. Don't display emotion. Don't display criticism. Uh, certainly, there's many times when I want to tell a coach that I had nothing to do with the four goals you just score. Your goalkeeper stinks. But I can't do that as an official. I have to remain calm. I have to be the voice of reason and the end wing. Certainly don't use inflammatory, negative, or, or foul language with anyone. Coaches, players, administrators, doesn't matter. Stay calm. That's the thing. Offer options. Coach, either we get this disruptive behavior to stop, or we're going to suspend play. Or it could be, coach, either you leave or we leave. It's up to you. You've been dismissed from the match. You've been shown the red card. You leave or we leave. Make your choice. You have two minutes to figure that out. I'll be over here looking at my watch. You got two minutes to figure it out. That's it. Don't debate. Once you've decided to discard, to, 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 to dismiss a coach or a player or a spectator, you don't change your mind. That person's now gone. And if they choose not to leave or they will not leave, then you leave. I, last thing I want to do is abandon soccer games and have referees leave. But Referee safety is just as important to me as the player safety is. And that determines by the three of us on the field, or in some cases, the two of us, if we're doing JV games or junior high games. So, you know, we have to stick together as a team too. Wait together in the middle of the field. The game gets over, get together in the middle of the field or to the side of the field, wherever the case may be, leave as a team. And if you've got situations that happen in a game, if you've got something that's out of the ordinary, if you've got extenuating circumstances, write a report. I made sure that everybody, regardless of whether you're the referee or assistant referee or side referee or lead referee, everyone can write a report in Arbiter now. Write the report. And you can see the report that your fellow officials do. If you want to add to it or adapt it or, or change something on it, no problem. But we are going to use Arbiter as our reporting system going forward. I can't speak for what Wyoming Valley Conference is going to do, but I can speak what the Lackawanna League is going to do. And we are going to use Arbiter as our bank of information because those game reports are visible to not only the officials, but they're also visible to administration, to the people paying us, the bill tools, the high schools, principals, administrators, and, and, and such as that. So do the report. But use correct terminology, state facts and not opinion, list the time of things, what happened, what took place, what did you do, what was the reason for the cautions or the ejections, what was the reason that you abandoned the match, but let's have some facts. And that's all we want on those reports, is just the facts. That's all. So, questions? Oh, we did a good job. All right. Um, keeping on that topic, and uh, I don't mean to be heavy on this, but uh, it's something that's been uh, I've been getting calls on for two weeks now. We've played two weeks worth of games in our league. Uh, so uh, first week and uh, just finish the second week. But a, we have to realize something as officials that there's three teams on the field every time we go on to a game. There's a home team. There's an away team. And there's the officials team. Our team is much smaller. We've only got three, sometimes two. So it's absolutely critical that our officials team, Renato, hit the mute button. Thank you. <laughs> it's absolutely critical that our official team works together as a team the entire time, from the time that you get together before the game starts through halftime and the time you get back in your car and leave. If you don't like the way something happened, 
that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but that's not the place that we're going to air it. If you don't like the way that one of your partners did something, that's fine too. Again, everyone's entitled to an opinion, but there's a right and a wrong place to air those differences. And it's never during a game. We need to stick together as officials. Uh, so I'm not going to listen to people criticize officials. I don't allow coaches to do it or administrators to do it. We're certainly not going to allow our officials to do it. So um, that being said, we need to work together. And, and I don't want to hear the, of officials blasting other officials, criticizing other officials, uh, being negative toward other officials, or they may have worked with this guy or that person last night or last week. Hey, everybody does things differently. If there's a problem with something, please let me know. I'm happy to address with anybody. But we have got people on our, our call and our group that wear multiple hats, that are coaches, that are administrators, that are athletic directors, that are principals, that are spectators when your kids are playing, and that's all fine. But the, at the end of the day, you're an official, and you always will be. So as an official, you're held to a different standard. I don't want to hear of cases where we have officials in the stands yelling at other officials officiating their kids' games. Because if that's the case, then I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to take that into consideration. We, 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 won't, we won't use people. I don't care how short we get. I don't care how many officials we drop or we don't have. I will not have officials criticizing officials off the field in any form or manner whatsoever. I was a coach for seven years while I was also an official. As a matter of fact, the only card I ever got as a coach was from Paul Scranato, and he's going to laugh at that one. And I was 100% wrong when I did it, and I apologized afterwards. But if you're a coach and you're also an official, unfortunately, you bear the burden of wearing two hats, and I get that. But we're not going to have officials criticize an official at any level, regardless of what it is that you, you know, what, what is going on. So if anybody's unclear on that or want further elaboration on that or need to speak to me individually or, or off to the side, you know how to get a hold of me. No problem. Questions? Anything unusual we should talk about in the first two weeks of the season that you've seen or uh, had happened to you during one of your games? Oh, we did good. All right. Um, my advice is always the same. Continue to check Arbiter. Games change all the time. Uh, the majority, a large number of our schools have decided to cancel JV games because they don't have enough players. Uh, so as that happens, I'm trying to cancel them as quickly as I possibly can because I don't want people to show up at a game expecting to do two and only doing one. So it still may happen. It happened to me on Saturday. All right, a game on Saturday that we didn't play JVs, but hey, we didn't. You know, they paid us, so so be it. Um, they decided they didn't have enough kids to play. All right, that's cool. But Tech Arbiter, yeah. Can you just? Uh... Holy Cross Junior High for all you guys that have to go do Holy Cross Junior High games. I did one Saturday with uh, with Billy Gibbons. They do not play where it says on their site. They play at Polonia Park. And Lou, is there a way we can get a hold of the athletic directors and have them update their information in Arbiter? Like many of them don't have a cell phone number on there. They just have an email address or they have. So we like a situation like that happens. We have someone to contact. Yeah, actually, what I'll do after this meeting uh, for our group is I will email out um, the list that I have uh, of athletic directors, and it has not only their work numbers and their work email address, but also has their cell phones, and in some cases, um, their home phone numbers on that sheet. Uh, so I will send that out to the group, um, but please don't pass out information for athletic directors to other people. Let's try to keep that amongst ourselves. I don't need high school principals calling me saying, hey, how come some guy from uh, this guy got my home phone number? I I'm okay sharing it with us, uh, but let's not have uh, that information leave our group. But it's a good point, Mark. I think we should be able to get a hold of these people, especially because not, they're not in the building all the time. I mean, Saturday is nobody's working. So it's hard to get a hold of a, an AD on a Saturday. I get it. Cool. Um, we have a, an opportunity coming up on Tuesday of this week uh, up at Montrose High School. Uh, we will be doing a mini version of what we did in, in March of last year, where people who want to come and take the PIAA soccer exam to become a PIAA soccer official can come to Montrose High School at 3.30 in the afternoon and show up. And we will have people there to help you assist with this and ensure that you uh, properly pass the test and have everything you need to officiate soccer. I've got um, 
many, if not most of the athletic directors in Susquehanna County come in and take the test themselves and some of their players and former players as well. Uh, so if you know of somebody who's interested in becoming a high school soccer official, come on up to Susquehanna County at Montrose High School at 3.30 on Tuesday afternoon. And if you want to see a good soccer game at five o'clock, Lakeland and Montrose are playing a game at that fight at five o'clock. So stick around and you can uh, watch a good soccer game as well. But if anybody wants more information on that, let me know. Uh, I'll be there. All right. Um, oh, one more thing too. Uh, mercy rule. Uh, we have a rule that changed two years ago now again uh, that says when the goal score, when the scoring differential reaches six goals, the clock will continuously run. However, there's a couple of caveats to that. Number one, it's only in the second half. So if there's 32 to nothing in the first half, we still stop the clock. It's a second half rule. It has to get halftime. If the score somehow comes back and it's now six to five, we still keep running the clock in the second half. It also negates any rule about substitutions. That once the mercy rule is in effect, then the team who's winning can substitute all they want. We're still not stopping the clock. The only time you'll stop the clock is if you, as the official, choose to stop the clock. Injuries, cards, things like that. But again, that's that's completely up to the officials. Uh, but the mercy rule takes effect after a six-goal differential, but it doesn't kick in until the second half, unfortunately. So sorry to say, if you have 10 nothing in the first half, keep going. All good. All right. I think that's all that I had to uh, go over on my list of stuff. I'm good. Anybody have anything for the good of the order? Cool. All right. Thank you all for attending and for coming and joining us. To those who are from other districts or other chapters, we love having you. So it's the same link every Sunday night or every time we have a meeting. I think it's the same link, right, Mr. Kirsten? Mark. Mark, say, same meeting link for our next meeting? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> if not, I'll send it out a new one. Yeah, Very send good. it out anyway. Send it out anyway, because I lose my emails. Uh, we missed the price. next one. Very cool. All right, folks. Thanks very much. Enjoy your Sunday evening, and uh, thank you for all your help this year. We couldn't do it without you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Good night, Take care. everybody. All right. Thanks. That's what I do have a question. Oh, go ahead. 